By now, you should be 100% convinced that any theory that says that the Jewish temple is in any other location aside from that of the Temple Mount's traditional site is absolutely impossible. If you don't believe that, go back and watch our series one, two, and three of this season. Today we're going to take a deep dive into the massive amount of archaeological evidence that's been found here in the land of Israel that all points to the first and second temples being right up there on the Temple Mount. Can scholars and archaeologists definitively say that there is strong enough evidence to support this? Come along on today's journey to find out. I was walking in the city of David around 18 years, every day. If I was found even a small finding that you can say that this is a temple around that, but there's no evidence about that, even a small evidence that say in the area of the city of David was a temple, period. These are the southern steps that lead to the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. They were discovered by a renowned Israeli archaeologist, Dr. Benjamin Mazar, and Jewish tradition tells us that the unique design of these steps, which is one long step, two short ones, was specifically built to direct a pilgrim's walk as he ascended up the stairs. One long step, two short ones, so that he could pay careful attention to his feet as he ascended to worship in the holy place. On top of that, remember the alternate location theory that says that the Antonia Fortress stood above us here and the stairs with that theory being the quick access down to the Temple Mount Plaza, alternate location, City of David. Now, if we talk about Josephus, Josephus says that that access was a fast access for the Romans. Now, if this is fast access, let's look carefully. We have one step, short step, and then we have a two step longer step, right? So fast, getting soldiers down to the Temple Mount Plaza, I'm sorry, does not work here. Let's just say this would be the best way to trip a Roman soldier. If you were gonna build a stairs for it, this is not how you would build a fast access Roman runway into an area you needed to get to. So pull it back around. We're back to traditional site theory. Temple Mount has to be above us. We're here now at the Temple Mount Sifting Project. This project is incredible. There was a not so incredible thing that happened when the Muslims expanded the Al-Aqsa Mosque. They just took out loads and loads of dirt from underneath it, actually like 9,000 tons of dirt. It's a lot, that's a lot. And now this project is taking it on to actually excavate it. Because you know, sifting it, see what kind of archeological evidence from the temple they can find. So we're gonna go join the group and see what we find. Welcome to the Temple Mount Sifting Project. One day in 1999, 9,000 tons of dirt fell on us. And uh, this dirt came from the Temple Mount and is very, very important. It's very valuable dirt because it contains a lot of information about what was going on in the Temple Mount over history. We found uh, seal impressions with the names of uh, priests who were like officials officiating at the, at the temple that were mentioned in the Bible, in like the book of Jeremiah. And so you have a, you have a triangulation between an archeological find, the scripture, and the location. Here we've also <clears throat> been able to reconstruct what the Temple Mount uh, courtyard looked like. We found a lot of geometric tiles and were able to calculate what they looked like when they weren't broken and then calculate what the patterns look like. And we saw how much uh, Herod, who rebuilt the temple, invested in the building material. This black material is called bitumen. He brought it in great, uh, in a, gr a great number from uh, the area of the Dead Sea. This red is granite, red granite that's brought from Egypt. And the white pieces our marble that was brought from Turkey. He did a beautiful job in rebuilding the temple, and this just shows how much uh, he invested in making it a really nice uh, reconstruction. Yeah. Yep.
We're really hoping to find some serious artifacts here. The deal is, is if we do find something, we have the archaeologist on site that's going to tell us if we actually find something. We're hoping this is going to be like a revolutionary find here. But, you know, the fact is, Luke, is that I don't know how much more revolutionary you can get. They've, they've only found like 10,000 coins. coins. Just, yeah. just coins. Um, and other artifacts that date exactly back to the Pottery. Uh, Temple Mount. Well, they found thousands of coins that actually show that this that the traditional site would actually be the site as well. There we go. Pottery right off the bat. I'm guessing pottery is the most common thing. Would this be a bone? <laughs> Looks like a bone. Oh, no? you were listening. Very good. Yeah, there's a bone. Yeah. bone. What would it be from? Uh, that looks like the rib yes. of, a, of, a, of a lamb. I've seen these before because I eat lamb, I eat this stuff. Yeah, yeah. most likely. Yeah. What would it be? <laughs> Temple service, maybe? You never know. It's hard to tell, but if it's burned, then the chances are it is. We have a lot of burned bones, like a third of the bone, a quarter of a third of the bones that we see yeah. are those types of uh, uh, temple service that mm -hmm. the families used to eat in the courtyard. Right. Okay. right some of them were burned uh, totally on the on the, uh, on the actual altar. Okay. But the family stuff, like uh, every tenth animal that was supposed to be brought to Jerusalem by the family and eaten in Jerusalem, uh, the Passover uh, lamb. I mean, it was supposed to be eaten. Uh, was supposed to be eaten in Jerusalem that yeah. night. Uh -huh. So, so that's uh, so. We and think you find a lot of burned bones. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's the bones just yeah. from the past few weeks. Yeah, yeah. The burned ones. Yeah. yeah right. All right. of these are either scorched or charred, which would, I mean, coming from off the Temple right. Mount, you would expect. Especially this. because, according to Jewish law, the Passover. Uh, lamb, which you had hundreds of thousands of people eating yeah. and er on, a, on a Passover Eve, uh, had to be roasted. Yeah. Had to be roasted on the fire. So that's what we think this is from. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. The fire here. Now, if you ask me, that looks like a mosaic. Perfectly round. I don't think rocks naturally come this way. We'll have to find out. But I would, I mean, look at this thing. It's got to be a mosaic cut perfectly from the Temple Mount. I mean, just think of the story this could have behind it. Think about who would have walked on top of that. Just let your mind go wild there, I don't know. But Temple Mount. They found 10,000 coins from here. They found all those pillars, marble, mosaics, uh, glass. All right guys, look at this. This is, I don't know how old this is, but it's some kind of crazy piece and it's maybe gold actually in here, literally. Look at that. Incredible. Look at all that color. We just found it right here. Incredible stuff. I mean, look at this. There we go. Could you give me an estimated number just on your project alone? How many pieces have you found that point? We to have, temple? I don't know, probably over uh, three quarters of a million pieces that the assumption is that they come from the Temple Mount. I mean, uh, that, that, that because they're connected with, uh, with the temple period there. Yeah. So it's not a theory. We're talking facts. We're talking scientific facts, okay? <laughs> Which okay. are always a basis for discussion, but uh, they're there. This is the this is uh, the the city of David with a temple painted into it. Okay, there's an the artist did this for me. So what's underneath this where the temple would be over the Gion Springs? Okay, this is uh, this is a a, a, a worship uh, area underneath there that they've just discovered. And I'll explain this in a moment. I'll do a little talking right here. We're here in this incredible archaeological site. And uh, you can see there's several rooms in here. But this dates uh, back to the time of the first temple. Right below my feet here is an olive press. If you look here, this is a channel right here where the blood ran. It, it just has everything going for it that it's a sacrificial area inside the temple precinct area. This is my finding. And this is this very, very, very important finding. It's go back to the uh, 18th century BC. It's go back to the Abraham time. It's go back to Melchizedek time. And this is the time when they build it. So there is no connection to King Solomon. The end of this place, it's 8th century BC, in the time of King Hezekiah. We're talking about 200 years late than the Babylonians destroyed the first temple that King Solomon built. Eli Shukran, who's the, he's a very famous archaeologist, he found that. But Eli cannot say that this is the temple. We're good friends. 
But you can understand the pressure that he has. He'll be ostracized from his community, from his family, from his job, from his peers. His career is over if he says this. And he as much as said that in so many words. People say that um, they've spoken to you and that you are just scared to announce to the public the no, idea no. of the temple being there. Can you address that? Because no, they, no, they I, state I'm, these, these I, I'm just, I'm just saying. One, it's me. You talking with me? I'm talking with you. I'm saying on the on on the table. I'm putting on the table the first temple, second temple on Mount Moriah. Period. In the city of David, we have different kind of finding, not connected to the temple that was on Mount Moriah, not connected to the temple, the first temple or the second temple. In the city of David, we had something different, connected to the different period, different finding. City of David, something that started in the 18th century BC and in the 8th century BC. So I'm not, I'm not scared to say anything to anyone, and I can say all what I told you everywhere, to everyone, wherever you want, period. Archaeologists discovered this massive, massive rock laying right here where it fell. Now, they know it fell because right behind the camera is the southwest corner of the Temple Mount. So obviously, the rock fell off the Temple Mount and landed right here. But what's so important about this rock is there is a Hebrew inscription that says, to the place of trumpeting to, and then it's cut off, so we don't know how it, how it ends. But we do have Jewish tradition to back it up. Certainly, and more than that, there's facts here. Look, the original part here, this is just the replica to preserve this. The original part down here is still cut into frame. This is where the trumpeter would have stood on the Temple Mount to announce different services, different things. We have lots of Jewish tradition to back this up. Once again, this is a part of a Temple Mount scenario, and as gravity has it, that again would be the place of the Temple Mount right above. The evidence is there. The evidence that shows that the Temple Mount is exactly where we say the Temple Mount is located. Uh, the archaeologists agree. The, uh, the, the men from the Palestine Exploration Fund, they agreed 100 years ago. We have the rabbis agree, all the texts agree. We have, there is ample evidence. Uh, it, is, uh, it is evident that the temple, we found the evidence that this is the temple. We know exactly where the temple building was located. If we've learned anything, we've learned this. Archaeology is so incredibly important. Right now, even, we're in the midst of a bunch of rubble that fell from just above us. Well, turns out, the traditional site of the temple is right here. Romans destroyed. We're standing in the ruins of all of this destruction. Okay, not only this, but around the Temple Mount Plaza here, the traditional site. What do we find? We found, well, they've pulled out 7,000 tons of debris from below the mountain, and they found thousands and thousands Hundreds of artifacts of thousands. that prove that this was the, indeed the traditional site of the temple is it. Not only that, the trumpeting stone that we spoke about, the stairs leading up to the temple, the specific details, they're all here in this plaza, the mikvahs, the list goes on. Guys, for sure, indeed, this is without a doubt the location of the temple. The evidence lies before you. A Jewish temple, the place where God chose to place his name forever, stood on top of the Temple Mount complex, right up there for thousands of years. And no one should ever try to place it anywhere else. Guys, you're gonna wanna subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming content. Let us know what you think of the conversation going down below. Make sure you tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back soon here at The Israel Guys. Everyone knows that the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, Al-Aqsa Mosque, Al-Haram Al-Sharif, or as we like to call it, the Temple Mount, is the third holiest site for Islam. But is it really? We've just found some really earth-shattering historic documentation from Islam itself that says otherwise. Islam, in its own view,
came to the world to replace everything which was ever Jewish or Christian and to acquire it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to go deeper about the temple in Jerusalem or the location of the temple, we've got links down in the description below, links for Joseph Good, who you saw in this series, links for um, our good friends at Cry for Zion who are advocating for Jewish prayer on the Temple Mount today, and also another resource that I think you guys will love. It's a book that was written by my brother, Ben Hilton. He's also the director and filmmaker of this series you're watching, and it's called Jesus Loves the Temple. It's just what you think it is, all about how our Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, absolutely loved the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, and he has a big heart for it, and he wants you to, too. So make sure you check out all of these links down below. As always, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes.